Good morning. Welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading people to experience God's love, to know Jesus Christ, and to grow in his image. My name is Sherry Clifton. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm delighted that you are joining us here in worship today. I want to encourage you to go to our church's website where you can register your attendance, where you can find ways that you can stay connected, and where you can see events that are happening here with us during this season of Advent. It's also a great place for you to leave your prayer requests and a way for you to continue supporting Bethany with your financial gifts. As we begin this time of worship, I remind you that in this time we worship with silence, with scripture, and with song together. As we begin, let us pray. Loving God, we pray that as we breathe deeply of your spirit this morning, that you would rest upon us, that you would allow us to be free from distraction as we offer ourselves to you, as we seek your presence with us, as we seek your blessing for us. We pray that our hearts and our minds, that our words would bless you, even as you pour out your spirit upon us this day. We give you thanks, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 12. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. As I read through this verse again, I invite you, if you're comfortable doing so, to close your eyes to breathe deeply, and to simply listen for God's word to you. Listen for a word or a phrase or an image that speaks to you and hold on to that. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. I'm going to read through the text one more time. I invite you, whatever word or phrase or image 
spoke to you that even as you hold on to that, that you would also offer your response to God. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. As we enter into this time of prayer, I invite you to spend a moment offering your prayers to God, whatever's on your heart and on your mind. You can pray silently or pray out loud where you are and know that God hears you and hears the cries of your hearts. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you that you are with us. We don't have to wonder if you care for us or if you love us. We can count on your presence. We can count on your love. We can count on you because you have revealed yourself to us in Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us, that that you provide ways for us to experience you and know you God with skin on for us and with us and to us. Help us in this season to have eyes to see you, to have ears to hear you. Help us to be open to experiencing your presence, even in unexpected ways, as you remind us that there is nowhere that we can be that you aren't already with us, that there's nothing that can happen to us that you don't already know about. Remind us that you meet us exactly where we are, regardless of our circumstances. Help us to trust that. Help us to not look around us and compare our lives or our Advent season or our celebrations or our journey to anyone else's. Help us to focus our hearts and our minds on your presence with us in our circumstances, meeting us exactly where we are with your compassion and with your kindness, with your patience. We pray that In response, we would be willing to meet one another in the same way, with compassion and tenderness, with kindness, 
with patience. In this season, as we wait for and anticipate the celebration of the birth of Jesus, we pray that you would remind us that we are the body of Christ. We are Jesus' body for one another and for the world. In the places where the body seems so broken right now and so fragile, pour out your spirit to mend and to reconcile. Pour out your spirit to strengthen and to uphold. Pour out your spirit to give us hope and joy and peace within ourselves within our relationships with our family and friends, within our communities and our nation and our world, within our churches. As we experience you being with us, maybe the greatest gift we can give to one another is simply to be with one another. Help us find ways to do that, even in this time when we can't physically be with one another. Help us know and understand that there are other ways for us to be together, to remind one another of your goodness and your grace, to remind one another of your love and your care, to offer encouragement and and healing and hope. Thank you that you are with us. We offer all of our prayers to you. For all the things that concern us and weigh us down and for all the things that give us joy and reason to celebrate the fullness of our lives right now. We offer that all to you, believing and trusting that you hold all of those pieces together. Even as you hold us in your perfect love and in your tender presence. We offer all of those prayers, the ones named and the ones that remain without words, we offer them in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our second scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, And they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This morning, as you are comfortable doing so, I invite you to close your eyes and to take a deep breath. To focus on breathing in and letting it fill your whole body and breathing out. Exhaling anything that is causing you stress or worry or weariness today. To continue breathing in the life of the Spirit and breathing out. As you focus on your breathing, as you close your eyes, I invite you to consider with me, Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with us. The creator of the universe, the giver of life, our redeemer, our sustainer, the one who sees us, hears us, knows us, loves us, this one, God with skin on, is with us. I wonder this morning, Where do you need to know that it is God who is with you? God is with you. Where do you need to know that this morning? God is with us. God is with us. Right here, right now, whatever our circumstances are in this very moment, God is with us. I wonder this morning where you need to know God's presence. Right here, right now. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. Imagine God with you, wherever you are right now. God is with you, sitting with you, embracing you, walking with you, holding you up, speaking truth, Encouraging you, listening to you? Can you imagine God with you right here, right now, right next to you? What do you need God to know right now? What do you most need from God being present with you right now?
God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. God is with you. God is with me. God is with our loved ones. God is with all of God's people. As you continue to imagine God being with you, right next to you, can you also imagine God being with your loved ones? With others who are dear to you but are not with you? Can you imagine God being with others in our world? who desperately need to know God's love and God's care, God's compassion and God's kindness, God's presence. Emmanuel, God is with us. I wonder what you need most right now and into this coming week, into this coming season. What do you need most right now in remembering who it is with you, that it is God with you? to know that God is present with you right now, right here. To know that God is really with you. And to know that God is with you and with your loved ones, especially as we have to remain apart from one another to know that God is with us. As you continue imagining God with you, as you continue naming for God what you need right here, right now, as you continue breathing deeply of God's spirit, I invite you to listen to this prayer. Still me until I hear your heartbeat. Quiet me until I feel your breathing. Make me one with your rhythms. Move me to the cadence of your love. You who are with us. And I invite you to listen one, once more to the words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, And they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is the word of our Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving and holy God, would you remind us in this day and in these days ahead that you are with us, that you who created us, who see us and know us and love us, that you who redeem us and sustain us, that you are with us right here, right now, wherever we are, whatever our circumstances. And as we allow you to embrace us with your love and care, help us know how it is we can be with one another, especially in this time when when physically we can't be in the same space. Remind us that by your spirit we are connected beyond space, beyond time. And allow us to know your presence with us and with one another. When we're tempted to think that we are alone, would you just tap us on the shoulder, remind us that you're there, that we might live more fully and freely in your perfect love for us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we go from this time of worship today, I want to remind you that you can get information about how to stay connected at Bethany on our church's website, as well as information about all the events that are happening during Advent and Christmas. As you go from this place, wherever it is that you are, I pray that you would know that God is with you and that God is with those that you love and care about and that God would give you ways to be connected with your loved ones and for all of us as the body of Christ to be connected to God's people who so desperately need to know God's love and care from us. As you go today, go in the love of God and the peace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.